I'm Grace Vandenberg. Thank you for joining me again. This week's topic, positivity. Positivity is everything. It's where everything begins. It directly affects the quality of our work, relationship with others, including our relationships with ourselves. Our living state of mind, perspectives, perceptiveness, and formation of opinions. How do I anchor positivity? The most popular question I'm often asked collectively with confidence. That will be another topic deserving of its own moment and conversation. How do I anchor positivity to achieve my ultimate objectives? For me, it was by creating and designing my own world. Initially, that meant withdrawing from the world in order to achieve Silence. Silence to process the pain, upset I have been hit by in my life in order to conquer my fears, derivative from that pain and upset. In other words, declutter, because authors cannot write with a cluttered mind or a cluttered workspace. Once that was all dealt with, Processed and archived in the past file, no longer immediately important. I could start building, building a career, writing, getting into a solid, successful, healthful, and healthy routine. In so doing, I became the architect of my present and my future, taking control of my thoughts, direction, perspectives. Perceptiveness. Essentially, I had to decode myself, everything I'd ever been taught, in order to recondition myself with useful data, intriguing facts, sensible verity, facts erected upon certitude, not gossip or conspiracy. Not comforting, meaningless lies that allow me to be likable to society. By following a crowd, I stepped out of all of that, all that didn't feel right, and somehow, with the diligent and ardent effort, constant daily effort, and fact, I applied these rules of taking stock of myself and for myself, and replaced all the wrongs with meaningful, enriched rights. Rights? What is that? You might ask. Truth, honesty. Affirmations, reality. For me, it means optimism built on a fair, balanced, and studied direction. Meaning, say you want to start your own business after years of dreaming. You finally have some savings. You have some business education and possibly experience. You're not going in with eyes wide shut. Meaning, you stand a better chance at success. I don't mean. Today, I awake and decide to be an entrepreneur, without savings, without research, without a business plan, no direction, no experience, no anything. That's not so much optimism as it is fanciful. Positivity comes with decoding and recoding. It comes with work and effort and application on a. Daily basis. It comes by drying out the opposite. In this particular case, I do, have not found it a matter of opposites attract. If anything, the latter can drain and sabotage the former. That includes the caliber of people you have around you. Surround yourself with educated people, people you can pick their brain and learn from. People that know a little bit more, and aren't so secluded in their own mindset, and the hustle and bustle of being around people. People who read and educate themselves on a daily basis, who have more expansive experience in a particular field, be it psychology, criminology, legal, whatever, and pick their brain and learn from other people. We as human beings derive our positivity 
either consciously or subconsciously, from those who share our space. As we learn from others, others may learn from us. Our traits, personality, sense of humor is often made up of those closest to us. Ultimately, a reflection of who we are, what we stand to become, our potential, what we can see in the future for ourselves. It's energy feeding us. As much as the frequency people are around you, that could also mean your nearest and dearest. Do you ever feel like you've spent what was meant to be quality time with your nearest and dearest, and by the time they've left, you feel drained and in a head funk, weighed down, not your best self, insulted? Do you ever dread seeing them and or friends? Those are the types of people I cleanse my life of, and I drum it home because it was the best decision that I've ever met, made. That's not to say everyone else must do the same. I share this to help you realize your potential. I would never have reached my full potential if I hadn't made those hard choices. In some cases, they weren't so hard to make, as much as they were absolutely necessary. Initially, I never thought it was possible to be able to take such control of my life and do just that. Purge. Purge in order to cleanse. Purge in order to achieve potential. Purge in order to attain happiness, contentment. Purge in order to seek success. But I did, and ever since reaped the awards of self-control, happiness, contentment, success in work and at home, but more crucially, within my own embodiment. Peace, inner silence, motivation, productivity. The correct education. Specifically, what I mean by correct education is this. I've known many people who lived and existed in negativity their entire life. Woe is me, blaming everyone else around them for not fulfilling their potential, therefore making up fanciful stories of a life unlived to fill voids. And those who dare to try are seen as an emphasis. So they set out to sabotage others, unable to change themselves. Too often, it's much more unable to. It's more unwillingness. Unwilling to apply the effort, time, diligence, the investing in oneself. Why do that when it's easier to lie and grumble about how hard life was, how you were deprived of opportunity? Opportunity doesn't always come a-knocking, unless you're already born into a very solid network, but we're not all that privileged. We have to seek opportunity. We all come across someone or something that drains us. We each make, must make the decision only we know within. What or who is holding us back from our truest potential and take decisive action? If it's not a person or so much it be in our environment, like a deadbeat one horse town or country, change that environment. These are only a couple of the tactics you can apply to enrich your life. But remember, everything begins with you. Are you, being, are you holding yourself back? Be honest. Is it fear of the unknown? Try something new that you don't have past data to analyze potential outcomes? Are you too analytic to take a chance? Have you tried once before and failed and are too scared to try again? and are embarrassed. Decisions and people, often the wrong people, are what make life as challenging as it can be. But we each need to form the strength of character to become a leader, even if it's in our own little world. And stop today being a follower. Being a follower doesn't take strength of character, it doesn't impress anyone, and it shouldn't impress you. 
doesn't carve out a stronger mindset in person. It's not challenging. It doesn't inspire. Writers, our work, our plots, everything about what we produce and birth into this world should inspire. It should inspire a person to read from page to one and complete that book because it captivated them. It interested them on some level, whether it was relatable to something in their life, whether it was just beautiful, poetic, fashionable writing, whether it was intense and captivating dialogue, whether the description were just intoxicating, it drew them in. It's easy, too easy, to be a follower. A follower is merely coasting along in life and thus becoming unfulfilled. And unfulfillment breeds bitterness, particularly in older age. Positivity isn't easy and doesn't come naturally to many of us. For others, it's a breeze. I don't believe that confidence breeds positivity. I believe positivity is a food, fuel, and energy. Confidence must be marinated in to be able to prolificate. There's many building blocks and baby steps to be taken. But putting in the work will transport you to the end goal of leadership. Positivity and confidence in unison leads to leadership and inspiration. More crucially, potentially, hopefully, your own inspiration. Be your own inspiration. And in turn, you can be other people's inspiration. And in turn, you can start building some of the most beautiful and strong relationships. Relationships with people, strangers, fans who will love your work, relationships even with your own characters, birthing more interesting, more spicy characters in your work. And that can ultimately only ever lead to better writing. And better writing can only ever lead to success and more success. Because you will re-inspire yourself each time you get a bestseller, each time you get a completion, each time you start and you finish, and it goes into the world and is well received. Positivity and confidence in unison lead to leadership. For me, that's where the inspiration lies. Every time you think you can't, think again. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, I'm Grace Vandenberg.